Yeah, Tuesday. What's up, everybody? Tuesday morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. You know, yesterday we ended the day with uh, a line that I like to think about the movie Anchorman. Uh, when Will Ferrell sits down, he's got a drink in his hand. And he goes, well, that escalated quickly. And that was our day yesterday. Uh, we had a we were bullish all day. Uh, and then in the afternoon, we had a huge move down in pre- pretty much all of our markets. And that huge move down, I think, was was stemmed by what happened with California's announcement of the coronavirus news. And so what we have to do is be able to react to that w- when it happens. Now, I will say that we had a couple of really nice trades, a couple of bullish trades that were that were strong for the day. And so when price came back down into that, uh, that was very end of the day, you may or may not have been trading. Uh, and so you may or may not have been stopped out of some of these levels. For a lot of you, your day was already over. And, and I got a, I got a, a number of texts uh, on our uh, on our text line uh, that said, hey, thank God my day was over, because that's that was one of those times where price just came smoking down at the end of the day. Uh, and if it's going to come smoking down, I'd like I'd like my levels to fail at the end of the day after I've already had a couple of pretty good trades, because that's what we'll look at for today. So if you're new to the channel, by the way, make sure you hit the subscribe button, the notification bell. We want to make sure that you get the alerts and the updates. Um, real quick announcement for Saturday, July 18th. For those of you that are interested, uh, we are doing a trade review session. The idea of the trade review session is that you can come in, uh, share any questions that you have, bring your trades to us, let us review those. That's going to be open to everybody. So if you go to tradersarmy.com slash live online, Saturday, July 18th at 8 a.m. Central, uh, you can join Justin Krebs as he reviews those trades. All right, let's go ahead and move on. So looking at our S&P this morning, uh, and in the ES this morning, we uh, we are up about 10 points after yesterday's really, really strong, quick drop. Now, we went right, I mean, we cut through these 15-minute levels like a knife through butter. Uh, it, di- it didn't even didn't even hesitate at those levels. And I will say I was looking at that because I thought those were both pretty good areas where we might see some strong reversals. But when you have the kind of news that came out yesterday, you're always subject to the market blasting through those levels. You're, you're always going to be subject to the market blasting through those levels. And so if I look at the S&P, if I look at the NASDAQ, we will see the exact same thing good levels that the market blasts right through. So now we need to look to say, okay, what does that set me up for from a trading perspective for today? So looking at what it sets me up for for a trading perspective from today, we're still on this 15-minute time period. Looking at our the origin of this move down, you know, we could come all the way to the top here, um, but looking at the origin of this move down on the hourly time period, we see that we had... The big start way up here, price dropped, and then we have this little wick where price rallied back up, and then a very strong drop. Now, I'm going to find that on the 15-minute chart, and that's what this green candlestick is, right? This wick right up into here. So we have two areas to consider. We've got this area up here, which is right at 3200 for a potential short reversal. And we have this wick over wick area right here for a potential short reversal, both of which are valid for an entry. However, I need to use these as confirmation entries. And the reason those have to be confirmation, or at least the first one has to be a confirmation entry, uh, is because there's a chance that we'll pop into here. If I go to my four-hour chart, we haven't really changed our trend direction, right? If I go to my four-hour chart, my trend direction has not changed. I still am in an upward trend. Lower swing high, or higher swing, higher swing low, higher swing high, right? So I still have higher swing high. And if this is, if we move up from here, this makes another higher swing low. So I'm still in an upward trend. So really the best opportunity to get short is on a breakdown. And the breakdown would have to be basing in front of this level because my big picture trend hasn't changed direction. And, and you know, was yesterday just an overreaction in the market to the, the, the California economy shutting down? Ca- call it an overreaction if you want. I don't know that it was an overreaction. Um, I, think it was a, I think it was a perfectly fine reaction uh, for the size. I mean, think of the size, right? And, and really what's more, what's more important is 
that that now leads to other states potentially shutting down again. You know, I live here in Texas, and, uh, and, and if that happens and we see Texas shut down, now you've got two of the, the, con- the, the, the country's two largest states, essentially, right? Two of the three largest states and economies shutting down um, Florida as well. And so the, those are all going to put a little bit of fear into the market. And that's what we saw happen yesterday. So I think that the breakdown, it, it gives you the best opportunity if we get a breakdown below this 3141 region. NASDAQ, same thing on the NASDAQ with a picture. If I go to a 15-minute chart, we will see the same uh, same areas, the same levels. Now, the NASDAQ obviously also still in, very much entrenched in a big picture uptrend. And so uh, still a confirmation style entry is in order on these trades just to be safe, right? I would much rather miss a trade than get in on one that doesn't give me a high degree of probability. And that's really kind of our standard rule. As far as the breakdown goes in the NASDAQ, I actually have a better breakdown in the NASDAQ below me at this 10,500. So I think the S&P breakdown is good, you know, right below this wick. But in the NASDAQ, I'd come a bit lower. Now, the Russell yesterday, we did get a really nice move away in our Russell trade. Uh, It came up and it wound up hitting our target one and our target two. Uh, and thank goodness it hit target one and target two, giving us the ability to take some money off the table because then it just shot right back through the level, uh, but did give us a really nice reversal trade off of those levels. So now um, looking at this from a 15 minute time period, same exact picture that we have in the other markets, although I don't have the clean wick over wick here that I have in the other markets. And so Uh, If I were to wrap my lines around the origin of this move, it would be this area up here. Now, the difference on this one is without having that wick over wick area up there, and then my four hour is not as strongly bullish as the other markets. So I'd be more willing to do a, a limit entry on this one than I am the other markets. I will say that from a breakdown perspective, this one actually has a little bit cleaner of a breakdown because we touched it once, touched it twice, touched it three times. So a little bit of basing in here gives us a really, really nice breakout candidate. Uh, Moving over to uh, our commodity markets, starting with our commodity markets, we've got crude oil. So we did look at a potential breakdown in crude if we got the prerequisite basing. We did not get said prerequisite basing uh, inside of this level. We just kind of popped through it. But we had spoken about the fact that if we if we did get a move down, look to a reversal off of this clean wick over wick level. And that's exactly what we got. We got a very nice move off of this wick over wick level. So price came into the area one, two, three, four, five, six candles later. We have we had a uh, we had started our move. And so even if you moved your stop to break even at that point, then you're still in the position. Uh, I, I think now's a decent time to take some profits off the table. Uh, we're starting to see a little bit of stall, and we've come back into this little wick over wick area up here that could be a bit of a reversal. It's not a clean wick over wick, but it is an area to to pay attention to, and it actually looks a lot like the S and P level that we're talking about as a potential reversal. So, uh, nice little move off of there. If you took that one on the hourly chart, uh, what I'm going to do now is remove that level because I don't know that we would want to take that again. And then I've been waiting for this four hour to break out, but it just has not broken out. And I'm still going to hold on that trade. That trade to me is still valid if we break out above there. Um, But we are seeing definitely uh, the momentum of our upward move is slowing way, way, way down. Um, We're definitely seeing a lot more weakness in crude oil. And so uh, our upward trend has broken. And and now I think that the better probability is, is that we will fall from here over the next little bit because our momentum is really telling us that. If I throw my uh, MACD on here, oops, not the comparison of the SPX. Wrong wrong, wrong study set. Uh, MACD, there we go. If I throw my MACD on here, it's really easy to see that we have lower swing highs in the MACD uh, and lowering momentum. So that lowering momentum to me tells me, okay, I think we may see a bit of a fall um, 
I don't have a setup as of yet. I'd need a breakdown trade to set up. That's why I said if you if you got your long, take it. If you got long down here on this wick over wick, take your profits because I feel like there's a chance we're going to fall from this area. If we get some basing, we will then look for a potential reversal. Um, but let's keep an eye on this little wick over wick down here as our next quality demand area at 38. All right, moving over to gold. So in gold, we did get our breakdown. Um, we didn't get quite as clean a basing as I would like. So if you didn't get in on the gold breakdown uh, because we didn't get a clean basing, we did get a touch here and move away and then drop. And we had looked at that on a 15 minute. Um, we, we got a little bit of basing in here. If you didn't catch that, you actually were very well rewarded by waiting for the retest. So price then came back into our level on a retest and we're getting a nice move away. I think that that, uh, if you're short that one, take your stop at this point, move it to break even. If you missed it, there is a little wick over wick right here where I think you may get another bite at the apple right there at 1800. So keep an eye on that one this morning uh, with a with a target maybe around 1788 just in front of this demand area because that's a pretty good demand area. Next, bonds and currency markets. So sitting here uh, on the ZN. So in our ZN, we did reach our supply level almost. It was one of those ones like, hey, let's get, no. Hey, no, no, let's get in, no. Um, and it just didn't want to get into that zone. We had no ability to, 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 to poke ourselves into that level. So now this needs to switch to a confirmation entry since we came close and didn't get in. Got to follow the rules. Um, and uh, we may continue to break down from here. I'm not going to add anything new to this level because I don't love those demand zones below me. We're still inside of our four-hour kind of sideways. Um, I don't love the demand areas below me, and so uh, I'm going to hold off on anything new on this one. Uh, it, same thing in the Aussie. Our four-hour chart in the Aussie is telling us to be patient and to wait. Um, we may get a little breakdown from where we are right below here. If we get basing in there, you could get a breakdown trade below that region. But other than that, I don't know that I would do a whole lot. You go to a 15-minute chart, you do have a little wick over wick up here that is worth investigating or, or waiting on. Uh, and this was from yesterday's movement as well. Uh, in the euro, so in our euro trade, we got our, we got our basing. We got a breakout. Price hit our target uh, and then went right through our our 15-minute uh, level up there. So it, so the breakout trade worked for a nice a nice little move. And then if you tried to reverse it at this breakdown, uh, then it it was a little stop out. So it was a it was a profitable trade here, and then a little stop out here. All in all, winds up being profitable if you took both of the sessions. Um, price then came back to the origin of the breakout and gave us a strong reversal. And that's one of the things to think about breakouts is is you don't always get the retest. You don't always get the retest, but oftentimes you will. And the origin of the breakout move became a demand level, and we've rallied off of that since the overnight session. So prices are continuing to move higher. When I go to my four-hour chart, we've got kind of an area up here of, of resistance that we're starting to approach. I think you'd be better looking for a pullback to a quality 15-minute level or 30-minute level. Um, we we might get a pullback into here. Uh, that's uh, that's kind of my closest one. I think this one here is probably a bit cleaner. And a bit of a nice rest if we pull back into that region. Canadian dollar, uh, we got a little bit of basing here in front of the level, and then we pop, poked down there in the overnight. We popped back up. I think if you're, if you're not in this one, I still think you have a chance to get short if it comes back down. Uh, if you did get in this one, one, two, three, four, five, we're almost to our sixth candle. Remember, your stop would be above this pivot, this wick up here. Um, so you're going to get stopped out on this piece here fairly soon if you jumped into it. If you didn't jump in, I still think it's a good opportunity to get short if we you know, come back down and give us some more basing inside this level. I do uh, I do still have that overall kind of bias in place. And then in the Great British Pound, we have off of, of off our 15-minute chart, price came into the level uh, last night, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six candles later, we had gone nowhere. Remember, that's why we use this kind of six-candle ruling. Uh, but remember that oftentimes we're going to see that that old 
old uh, old area of uh, of demand becomes new supply. So what I'm going to do is change this color to goldenrod. I think that's the name of that goldenrod, um, and use that as a reversal, as a flip level, and that is what we'll see happened here in the Japanese yen. We were basing inside this level. We talked about this yesterday, and then this area kind of became a bit of a flip area um, from from that uh, from that point. So keep an eye on this one today. We may still come down into this level here, but this was a uh, a very small little zone. I'm going to remove some of these levels. Um, we had talked about that area being a potential reversal, and it just didn't uh, didn't fly. The four-hour chart, we've got some demand in here. I'm actually going to remove this one as well. I think it's just better to wait on this. Uh, I think my my trend is telling me better to to look for 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 down opportunities on the bearish side, and I think that you know you're probably better off looking right up in here at some of those levels above us. Uh, Fifteen minute level right here is actually pretty clear, and it's very small for minimal risk and minimal exposure. All right. Tomorrow, we will be doing a live daily market commentary, so don't forget to join us tomorrow at, uh, at 7 a.m. Central for our live daily market commentary. Remember, we started doing that every Wednesday. Uh, so youtube.com slash tradersarmy for the live daily market commentary. Hope you guys have a phenomenal trading day today, uh, and I will talk to you soon. See you.